Hello everyone, my name is Prodesilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about the basics of Emacs Client. This is a program that comes bundled with the standard Emacs distribution and what it does is it allows us to connect to the running Emacs process in order to share the data it provides, the kill ring, the buffer list, etc. Uh, or to evaluate some Emacs Lisp from outside of Emacs. Uh, what I have here in front of me is the man page for Emacs client and in order to use this uh, tool you need to have a running Emacs process either MX server mode or you can have this inside of your uh, initialization file, your .emacs or uh, the running Emacs uh, daemon. Uh, I won't go into that specific area, you can read more about it. I believe there is also a chapter in the official uh, manual of Emacs what I want to do now, and of course in the man page over here, it, it uh, references these, server mode and things of that nature. Anyhow, what I want to show you here is one, the ability to evaluate Emacs list from outside of Emacs, and then how you can create either an Emacs instance in the running terminal or a new graphical frame uh, running Emacs. So let me spawn a terminal emulator. So this is X term. I just want to do this so, that, so as to make it uh, perfectly clear that what I am doing now is outside of Emacs. So let's start with an Emacs client uh, command to evaluate some ELISP. Uh, I have to quote this and inside of parentheses I will write my ELISP. So what I will do now is I will run an ELISP function that will uh, change the theme of Emacs from the light one I have now to a dark one. So load theme and I want you to load modus vivendi which is my dark theme. So if I now evaluate this, if I hit the return key, it should turn Emacs dark. Let's do it and see how it goes. It did exactly what I was expecting of it. This is great. Let's now uh, turn it uh, back to the light theme again. Okay, it did exactly what we were expecting. The point is uh, to be able to evaluate ELISP uh, and I was using my themes as an example. Uh, uh, parentheses, I have submitted pull requests to Melpa for these themes. So when they are approved, I will do a video on the matter. Anyhow. Let's proceed with Emacs client. Let's do now another thing. Uh, let's now um, spawn a new frame and let that frame evaluate the Emacs Lisp we are interested in. So I want to create a graphical uh, instance of Emacs. So I pass the C option and now I want to evaluate some E Lisp. Uh, let's evaluate MU for E. MU4E, this is, in case you're not aware, this is a package that implements an email client, an email indexer and the front end to it. Anyhow, uh, something to do with the email. And this is what I am using for my email. So if I evaluate this, it should spawn a new Emacs frame and have the main uh, screen of MU4E uh, right away. Let's see. And this is exactly what it did. This is the main interface, the main uh, entry point to MU4E. This is great. And now it tells me at the very end over here, control X five and zero to close this. That's a very tedious key cord. I would have to figure out uh, a, a shorter way to do that if I were to rely on this uh, function. That's great. Let's, for the sake of completeness, let's run another uh, command. Let's run Bongo. This is my music player inside of Emacs. So if I evaluate this, it should create a new frame and uh, take me to my playlist. Let's see. This is exactly what it is doing. This is fantastic. Let's uh, close this. What was it? Control X 5 and 0. And it closes uh, this. Of course, you can close it with your uh, window manager's keys. So I have a key for that, it closes that way as well, much easier than playing the piano. Uh, so that's great, let's do the same, let's do the same, and this time let's uh, pass the option T, so to uh, open this in the running terminal. Uh, okay, here it is, the same thing, the bongo playlist. 
control x5 and 0 because I don't want to close the terminal. Okay, that's great. So we can see already that uh, we can control Emacs from outside of Emacs. Now you may wonder, what's the point of this? Why can't you do uh, inside of Emacs MX MU4E, MX Bongo, or whatever to load the theme? Or why can't you evaluate all of your E list inside of Emacs? And the reason is twofold. Either you want to evaluate some E list from a shell script for whatever reason you may be doing that or you may want to assign functions such as the one such as the ones I just showed you want to assign these two hotkeys uh, so that you can spawn a new frame uh, running that specific program without uh, necessarily having Emacs in focus uh, so let me uh, come to um, the um, configuration file that uh, implements my key bindings. This is sxhkdrc. It is the configuration file of sxhkd, the simple x hotkey daemon. This is a, a truly awesome uh, piece of software that I am using in tandem with my custom, uh, with my uh, window manager, bspwm, inside of my bespoke uh, uh, computing environment. So let's, let's define some keys just for the sake of this demo. Uh, these are some key chord chains. I will explain what I'm doing in just a second. Let's write this. So what I want is I want to press mod 3, which is the hyper key, mod 3 and G, and then release those and press either of B, E or M. And when I press this key sequence, I want it to run the corresponding command. Emacs client, I cannot type, Emacs client, I wanted to create a new graphical frame and then I wanted to evaluate some elisp and the elisp should be quoted and inside of parentheses and here is the magic. So bongo corresponds to b, lfeed corresponds to e and mu for e corresponds to m. So let's save this and let's reload uh, the hotkey daemon. So if I press now uh, mod 3 G and B, it should spawn bongo and B, the bongo playlist. Let's do it with lfeed. lfeed is over there. Let's do it with mu4e and mu4e is over here. This is truly awesome in my opinion because now I have full control over Emacs. Now what I can do uh, to build on this, I could write some uh, rules for BSPWM which would control the placement of these windows. So for example, I could write something so that if I spawn MU4E in a new frame, put it on the monitor to my left. If I spawn LFEED in a new frame, uh, place it on desktop number 9 or whatever. You get the idea. If I spawn uh, bongo, make the window floating. Whatever uh, I think about, I can implement it this way because now I am not relying just on, on the functions that Emacs provides, but I am also leveraging the entirety of my custom desktop session. So this is great. And uh, what I have uh, right now, uh, I'm not, I will probably implement something like this. Maybe not the exact keys, but this is the spirit of it so that I can have those um, standalone applications, as it were, I can have them also in different frames. And the reason for that is because sometimes you are working on some, uh, you are editing something and you have something like this, and uh, you want to keep the files that you are editing, you want to keep the layout intact, but you very quickly want to, for example, uh, uh, check your um, playlist, I don't know, the bongo, the bongo playlist. You don't want to uh, switch to bongo and do that. And you want to uh, spawn a new frame so that it does not interfere with your files over here. And then inside of that frame you do your work and then come back here and find everything in place. This is just one workflow. Of course, there can be other possibilities. Uh, one specific use case I have already implemented, this I will not keep it right now, I will think about it a bit more, 
but one specific interface, sorry, one specific uh, set of keys I already have is my dedicated media keys. Uh, to uh, already uh, send commands uh, to uh, Emacs to evaluate some Emacs Lisp. So when I play, press the play or pause key, it will start playing music from the Bongo playlist. If I press uh, the media key for next, move to the next track and things of that nature. Another thing I have, maybe I could uh, do this as well. So I have, I have some themes for terminal emulators uh, and the themes are, there are lots of them actually. So this is the list of the themes. They are called Tempus themes. Don't worry about the specifics right now. Some of them are light themes. Some of them are dark themes. And this is something I had before the days I switched to Emacs. The ability to change the theme of my entire computing environment, so my GTK themes, my system panel, my terminals, Vim is what I was using before, uh, the whole thing to change from light to dark and specifically uh, to uh, any of these items which each of them has a different palette. Uh, but because in Emacs I have only two uh, themes, I have a light and a dark, I, make, I made it so at this early stage, at this interregnum, if you will, at this uh, intermediate point where I am transitioning to Emacs, I have made it so if uh, one of the items here is a light theme, use my light theme for Emacs. If it is a dark theme, use my dark theme for Emacs. So let me show you exactly this. Let's switch to, uh, I don't know, let's switch to night. So as you can imagine, this is a dark theme. So I have Modus Vivendi, which I already showed in my Emacs, and I have Tempus Knight in my terminal emulator over there. And this is something I am able to do uh, thanks to uh, a script I have. Do I have it over here? So this is the script I have, and the specific function that concerns Emacs is this little thing over here. As I said, this is, uh, I am in an intermediate stage right now where I am transitioning from my old setup, which was centered around Tmacs and Vim. I am transitioning to Emacs, so I'm not sure if I will keep this. The point is you can use Emacs client to script things. You can use Emacs client to uh, combine Emacs with your window managers rules or other functions it may provide and this way you can achieve a more efficient, a more seamless uh, workflow inside of uh, your custom, your integrated uh, computing environment. I believe that covers it. Uh, these, as I said, uh, these are just the basics. Uh, the more I think about this, the more I figure out uh, use cases and applications, I may do another video on the matter, but that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.